time, we continue the hunt for Abattoir with some more nonsense. As we cover Batman issues 506 and 507, these issues were written by Doug Bench with coloring on both by Adrian Roy and editing for both by Jordan B. Gorfinkel and the legendary Denny O'Neill. Issue 506 has pencils by Mike Manley, inks by Joe Rubenstein, and lettering by Ken Brusniak, while 507 has pencils by Jim Ballant, inks by F uh, Frank McLaughlin, and lettering by Willie Schubert. We open as Asbat patrols the city and broods while recapping Abattoir's escape after his previous murder attempt. Before, we go to Graham, Jim's father, who is in prison in Blackgate and is speaking to his lawyer about putting a contract on Abattoir, not because he's worried about his son, but because he's worried about the trust that his son is trustee of. Elsewhere, in a Gotham tough guy bar, Ballistic goes in, hands the bartender his business card, and says he's up for some contract work. Elsewhere, three knuckle-headed former musicians turned leg breakers with mannerisms like Larry, Curly, and Moe, and a leader who's inspired visually by Iggy Pop, are learning about the open contract, and these three stooges, if you will, decide to go after the contract. Because Iggy Pop's band was called the Stooges? Back with Ballistic, he gets a call about the contract as well, while in turn, simultaneously, Asbat is shaking on the associates of Abattoir's known associates. All while we have vignettes as to what Commissioner Gordon, Bruce, Alfred, and Tim are up to. Ultimately, Asbat, the Stooges, and Ballistic track Abattoir's associates to a fence as the issue ends. We start issue 507 with the standoff between the three groups lasting just long enough for the Stooges to realize that Batman and Ballistic aren't going to fight each other, at which point they just attack the duo. When that does not go as they planned, the Stooges set fire to the warehouse and flee, forcing Batman and Ballistic to stop and rescue the unconscious and injured people inside. Batman and Ballistic track down their next lead, Raf Luxor, or Rafe Luxor, who runs an Egyptian-themed nightclub. Unfortunately, the Stooges get there first and terrorize the performers until Rafe comes out to try and talk them down, and when it turns out he doesn't know anything, the Stooges kill him. Batman and Ballistic arrive just after Rafe is murdered, but before the Stooges can leave, so they take them down and learn that no, the Stooges aren't actually allies of Abattoir cleaning up loose ends, which their habit of murdering any possible lead that could point someone towards Abattoir would imply, and instead are going after the open bounty. This in turn leads the two to Henry Itchison's lawyer, Winston Brock. Batman and Ballistic basically shake down Brock. Batman for a list of properties Henry owns, which he suspects one of them is where Abattoir is holed up, and Ballistic for the money, at which point Ballistic then calls the cops on Brock, trusses him up, grabs the money, and skips town. The story was kind of eh. The Stooges, as antagonists, feel like people have been heavies for the Joker, but he got tired of their shtick, but not so annoyed by it that he decided to just kill them. Honestly, if you said that they were introduced in the story in the 80s, where that was their backstory, that they were just some heavies for the Joker, I'd believe you. Next time, we're doing a side story that's published after the resolution of the Abattoir arc, but which doesn't particularly heavily touch on the arc, so I'll cover it that, uh, then, and then we will return to Abattoir. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please like and subscribe, and also consider backing my Patreon. Patreon backers get episodes up to one week early of this show and any f future Let's Plays. Also, please consider backing my coffee. Uh, toss me a few bucks also helps support the show, and it's not a monthly obligation or anything like that.